He can't see movements. Run away! He seen us. Welcome Reaper fans! Today we have Thunderfoot. This is the new Reaper Bones Black miniature and it's from the Dinosaur Collection. Um, I'm going to be doing a T-Rex and all the other dinosaurs that they've done um, and they'll be in future videos. But this one I will be giving a nice swampy jungly type base today. Um, I'm going to give this a primer with my Rattle Can primer. I'll probably use a Games Workshop or a uh, Army Painter uh, spray can uh, to do the undercoat on this miniature. Um, I'm going to be adding a 100mm base boss base to this bad boy. And what I'll do, I'll come back once I've added the primer to this miniature. And I want to show you today how I'm making my swampy base. Um, so that'll be something to uh, watch later. But I will come back once I get this all primed up and then we'll go straight onto the base. I'll show you the base and then how we paint this miniature. I just wanted to show you quickly what I'm going to do about the base. Now I've got a permanent marker here, it's just a felt tip pen. And I've got the miniature on the base there. Now. I need to make the base work for my dinosaur so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just mark out on the base where the feet are and this way I will know I cannot go over these lines <laughs> I just pulled his head off <laughs> Okay, so I'm going and add them up. There we go, all together. So there we are. We've got our little, looks like a little smiley face. Or, or could be an evil face. <laughs> but um, this is where my dinosaur goes on the base. And the reason I do this is now I know I can build up all the rest of the area with clay and do my swampy effect. And when I go to stick the miniature on, it'll go nicely in the area which I haven't added any material. So we just want to make sure that we keep that clear and then we can stick the miniature onto the base at a later date. Okay, so for the base, I got some air drying clay. And I am going to take a little chunk of the air drying clay. Don't need a lot. I just use the air drying clay to build bulk out, make little rocks and little bits and bobs. Make sure you always put the lid or wrap your air drying clay after you've used it because it will harden and we don't want that. Now I am going to place my clay all around the areas that I want on my base. Now I don't want it too high because the dinosaur will rub against it and we don't want that. So what we're doing is just placing little chunks around the miniature base. Like so. Now my idea is to have a water effect going around the base. So my idea is to stick a thin layer of clay going around different parts of the base and the dinosaur plodding through the base that's all swampy and full of water and what we're doing with the clay that actually becomes your walls to keep the water from spilling over the side of the base. So what we're doing is we're using the clay 
as a barrier along the edge of the base. So we work around the edge of the base and just roll out the clay. Now remember the clay once dry will come away from the base. So all you do then is you stick it back on with PVA glue and the PVA glue actually um, will seal the base. Um, so when you add your Valleco water effects later on, um, it will not leak through the clay because you've sealed the clay with the PVA glue. Uh, so it works very well that way. Now the, there we are. What I'm going to do now is just add a little bit there. Then I use my little finger and, and dip it in some water. We're just going around all the clay areas just to flatten it out. It's super simple. You don't have to be um, you don't have to be a super sculptor to do this. This is just a fantastic quick and easy way to make an awesome looking base. Just want a little bit of clay there. Because what I'll do as well, once this is all dry, we will paint it and we'll seal it and then we'll add the water effects. And then we'll add, add little bushes and all sorts of little things like that. And it just makes it look so cool and swampy. You know, just like the dinosaurs are trundling through the swamps to get to their food. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a very exciting base to do. And I love working with air dry clay anyway. So as you can see, that's roughly all you need to do. You're sealing around the edges, just so you can fill this up with water later. Once you put the miniature in you can, and you've painted all the base, um, and I'll show you how to paint the base to make it look like deep water. And then you just add your miniature and it looks like it's plodded in through the water. So I'll come back once this is dry, which takes about a day. Um, so I will come back once it's dry and we'll go to the next stage. Ah, so it's been about 48 hours and my base is now dry, the air drying clay. I've glued the clay back onto the base with some PVA glue and I've added some fine gravel. And I've also done the primer coat for my dinosaur in Bram. I used um, Games Workshop uh, Rattle Can Primer for this one and it's uh, nice and dry, works perfect. So I've used him as a base and he'll be going in there like so. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to prime this base and get it all painted and we'll come back once the base has had its primer coat. Okay, so my base has all been primed. So what I'm going to do now is add some depth so for the puddles. Not too much. So what I'm doing is I'm going straight into a matte black. And I'm just adding it to the middle of the flat areas. I mean, we're not going to see much of this once the miniature is in the base uh, we've put the miniature in the base uh, so what we've done there a bit of black and then we're just going into some darker brown and we're just kind of blending that in like so just blending it around there we Make it a little bit lighter as you get towards the edges of the base. Like so. And that's all you need to do. Very simple. And that gives you um, the illusion of depth. Once the paint is dry, I will dry brush the rest of the mini with a lighter brown going around the edges. There we are. Simple as that. And as you can see it looks like there's little deep areas 
just in the mud. And once the miniatures on there stuck on, uh, we'll add our we'll add our Valleco water effects, and that'll be uh, make it a really nice effect and give it a swampy feel. So what I'm going to do now is we'll go straight on to painting the dinosaur. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be dry brushing greens on the top and the top of the head, uh, keeping the bottom brown and it will go across and then I'll add that brown ink wash which will bring out all the highlights, uh, all the shading colours and give a nice effect. So I'll get myself prepped up and then I'll come back and we can go through that together. Okay, I've got some turf green and I've got some cat's eye green by MSP and I'm going to be putting this straight on to the miniature. So we're going into the turf green and straight away onto the back. And about halfway down the miniature. So we kept the we're still keeping the brown underneath. Same here. This on the front, we're not doing it as strong because we want that brown to come through. Just like so. There we are, that's nice. Now I'm going into the cat's eye, adding that into the mix. And this will be just to give a highlight to the top of the dinosaur on the skin. And I'll give instant highlights. Now that's all I want to do so far for that. Now I'm going to wait for this to dry and then I'll come back and I'll show you what's next. Because what I want to do is add black lines going across the top, which will be a very, very dark green. And then we'll do that ink wash and then we'll do the highlights, pick out the details. And that's a very simple miniature, which will look good and it will be done. Okay, let's get back to the base. What I'm going to do now is I've got some ghoul skin from MSP and I've got a bit of uh, Lone Star leather from MSP. So I'm just going to highlight the different places on the base, um, mainly the tops of the rocks. going around and now I'm going to add a little bit of the brown There we are. 
this just brings out some of the rocks because it is a very dark base so you, you're trying to um, make it a little bit brighter so I'm going to add a little bit of green as well just around the edges of the rocks nice dirty swampy look to the base yeah it all blends in nicely just there we go perfect yeah. nice dirty looking base what I'll do once I've stuck the miniature on and added the water effects, I'll add a couple of tiny little bits of flocking, little bits of shrubbery around the base. And that's all I'll need to do to that base. Um, going back to the dinosaur, I have painted all the horns in skeleton bone. And so what I'm doing now is I'm just waiting for these to dry and then I'll come back and we'll do those nice little lines that I was telling you about and then we'll do the ink wash and then we'll leave that to dry and then we'll come back okay so let's get our stripes done I have got some mossy green which is the darkest green from MSP and I'm gonna add a tiny bit of black to it as well just a tiny little drop on the brush there just to darken it off a bit more just to make it even darker there you go. I'm using an old brush for my mixing. I don't like mixing paints with nice brushes. So I use my old brush. And that goes and gets a little wash. And goes back in the brush box. In the brush of shame box. Where the brushes have been ruined by myself. So, what we do is we get our me we've got our nice color and we are just going and giving stripes down the miniature let's see if i can get this in the shot for you there we go so boom 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 all i'm doing is stripes going down I just find the stripes add a little bit more to the dinosaur and once you put your ink wash over the top of the stripes they really do blend in really well onto the miniature um, so what we do is we go along just adding these little stripes simple as that just drifting off and finishing off on the tail. Like so. Trying to get them more even. Yeah, that's, that's the point. And what we do is the same on the other side. And so the stripes will be like so. And you do the same going down the other side. I'll come back once I've done that. And then we'll sh I'll show you the next process. Very simple. Well, now we're coming to the last part of the miniature. My base is nearly all done. All I need to do now is add the water effects. I put some little shrubs and stuff. The dinosaur, all I need to do is finish the eye. As you can see, 
I have added a brown ink wash and then I went over it with a light dry brush of a light brown to give a dirty effect like it's been stomping through the mud so it goes all the way across the body and as you can see those lines that I added earlier because I've added the ink wash and dry brushed over they've blended so well in with the dinosaur and it all comes together beautiful so I'm going to add my water effects now I use Valeco still water effects this is quite expensive I think this cost me about 10 10 12 pounds for this little pot from Amazon now it's very simple to use you do not shake it you don't want any air bubbles so all you do is you take the little lid off and let me see if I can do this without squirting it everywhere all you do is you slowly put it into the base just let it fill in just like water it'll go into all the crevices like so oh making a mess already there we are. I'll do this side so you just squirt the, well just let it drip in you don't squirt it in it'll go everywhere so just slowly let it drip into the base and let it go around the feet If there is any bubbles, or you do what I just did there, and squirt the water over your rock, just get a tissue and take it off of a tissue. There we go. It's quite crazy because with this base, I'm doing all the work on the base and you can't really see what I'm doing because the dinosaur is covering it. But that is what makes it even more special. It's that added extra that you add to the base makes the miniature and it makes it shows that you care about what you're doing so there we are that's on there and i can see some bubbles you see the bubbles there all you need to do is get a little pin a little pin and just pop the bubbles of the bit there you go and they've gone now this can take a few days to dry um, so I'm afraid I won't be able to show you the finished miniature um, while it's dry because as you can see it's still cloudy but that cloud will turn into pure crystal clear a water effect uh, but to finish this video I will do the eye and then I'll come back and show you how I got on but this water effects like I say very simple and effective you can use gloss varnish I mean that, that is a cheaper cheaper alternative and it does work really well a couple of coats of gloss varnish will give you quite the same effect this is for doing a bit more deeper effect so you've got a more rich deeper look to the water and once it's dry it does look fantastic okay next week's paint will be worm gear this will is a steampunk dragon as I call it I absolutely love steampunk so next week expect lots of golds and brasses and metals metallics and a fantastic dragon you're gonna love this this is a very nice dragon I've painted this one before and it's really nice really 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 nice so this is next week's paint now if you like what I'm doing then please sub subscribe to the channel if you want to support the channel then please become a patron all patrons are added to the end credits of all my videos uh, just to say thank you so until next time
Goodbye, my fellow rats. Sleep well. Dream of evil. Pink brushes. Ha <laughs> ha.